Mansella, I'm from Tafwa and I love listening to Today FM, Today FM Rocks. My name is Freddy, I'm uh, from Gamiaton, I listen to Mario on the traffic jam every afternoon. Hi, my name is Sala, I live in Asinu, Today FM Rocks. My name is Denasa and I'm from Lutoka and I love listening to Today FM. My name is Mulonila, I work at Golden Point Resort, I love listening to Today FM, it rocks in Raki Raki. I'm Mary from Mandera. I love listening to Today FM, Today FM Rocks. We love listening to Today FM, Today FM Rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. I'm Jackie Spate and this is FBC News. Tonight, judge overturns assessors, finds nine guilty. Fiji celebrates life for fallen heroes. And Prime Minister Mbani Marama continues Middle East tour. All nine accused in the rape and sexual assault of robbery suspect Vilikesa Soko, who later died, have been found guilty by High Court Judge Justice Aruna Thulji. His judgment today was contrary to what the four assessors in the case had ruled, that six of the accused were guilty and three were not. Ellen Stalls with the details. The Latoka High Court was full today, everyone eager to hear the fate of the nine accused. In his judgment, Judge Justice Aruna Aluthke clearly stated that he disagreed with the assessor's findings, finding their ruling not possible and perverse. He went on to say that he was satisfied with the evidence that the prosecution had presented in court and was convinced beyond a shadow of a doubt that all nine accused were guilty. He added that the nine men who were jointly charged with two counts of rape and sexual assault were either directly raping or assaulting the two suspects, Senjani Boila and Vilikesa Soko, or indirectly by not intervening in the crime. First accused, Manasa Talala, and the sixth accused, Viliame Verevalu, have been found guilty of defeating the cause of justice. He says during the trial, the defense had said that while all the accused were present at the scene where the two suspects were tortured, raped, and assaulted, it did not prove that they had a hand in beating the suspects. Refuting this, Judge Aluth Gray said, that by simply being present and witnessing the grave injustice and not intervening, they were in fact aiding and abetting. The judge reminded all the nine accused that as law enforcement officers and a military officer, it was their duty to uphold the rule of law and that they were all fully aware that they had not followed procedure by not taking the two suspects to a police station. The two suspects assaulted were arrested at Tangange village in connection to a Nandi robbery in August 2014 and were then taken to a hillside in Malevu where they were tortured. After being severely tortured for information and raped, Vilikesa Soko died in hospital days later. The mitigation for the case will be held on November 16th at the Lotoka High Court. Ellen Stalls, FBC News. In commemoration of our fallen soldiers, a dawn service was held this morning to honour their lives. Members of the disciplinary forces attended the event, including ex-servicemen and members of the diplomatic corps. Ali Kimbia has more. The sound of the last post signifies a day that echoes in the memories of ex-servicemen to remember those that have lost their lives while serving as soldiers. I was also a soldier, but when I was small, I used to hear that my grandfather was a soldier and went to France and died in the battlefield. So today is a big day for me and my family. The first wreath was laid by the defense minister Inoke Kumbombola, followed by other disciplinary forces and ex-servicemen. For some of the ex-servicemen that were present at the dawn service this morning, this is a day to honor those who have lost their lives. During our first trip to Lebanon, one of our fellow comrades died. So every remembrance day, I used to think about him, as he is one of my best friends when in Lebanon. The service was also attended by the commander of the Republic of Fiji Military Force, Commander William Enalpoto, Assistant Commissioner of Police Isikeli Lingairi, and other senior military officers. Ali Kimbia, 
FBC News. A service was also held at the war memorial in Veyuto Suva. President Major General Retired Chiochi Conrote led the commemoration, laying a wreath to pay tribute to Fijians who died in the line of service. The event was attended by members of the Fijian government, foreign dignitaries and retired servicemen and women. Fiji has made a commitment to continue with peacekeeping duties in Lebanon, says Prime Minister Burengen Bainimarama. While speaking to FBC News, Bainimarama said the safety of every Fijian in uniform will always remain the priority as they carry out their duties on behalf of the UN. Lebanon Prime Minister Saad Hariri and President On hosted Prime Minister Burengen Bainimarama and the Fijian delegation. Prime Minister Hariri thanked the Fijian delegation for visiting Lebanon and for its continuous support through peacekeeping duties. Hariri also mentioned a trade delegation from Lebanon will be visiting Fiji in September next year. Baini Marama also thanked the Lebanese government for their continuous support to Fiji. This visit is part of a tour that Prime Minister Vurengen Baini Marama is making to the Middle East capitals to discuss Fiji's contribution to United Nations peacekeeping operations in the region. New Zealand police have confirmed they did not tell former Fiji citizen Shalendra Raju to tone down his comments regarding the Fijian government on his Facebook page. Raju, through his Facebook page, makes frequent and anti-Fiji statements and has also made defamatory remarks about many Fijian individuals and groups. Police say they spoke to Raju in August only regarding some specific Facebook posts which were of concern. However, it refutes Raju's comments on Radio New Zealand International yesterday that police officers told him to tone down comments about Fiji. Raju, who used to work for former Prime Minister Lysini Ngarase, was involved with the Fiji Labour Party, could now be questioned by the New Zealand police for falsely claiming that he was questioned and asked to tone down comments about the Fijian government. Meanwhile, the Federation of Islamic Association of New Zealand has filed a complaint against Fiji-born lawyer Rajendra Chaudhry with the Human Rights Commission and the New Zealand Law Society. Speaking to Radio Tehrana Association Executive Officer Javed Khan says Chaudhry's social media comments regarding Prophet Muhammad is blasphemy and also an act of hatred. He has uh, written that uh, our prophet was a pedophile and uh, Prophet Muhammad that should be abolished because of his treatment to women and girls and it should be replaced by uh, Ratu Sukunade. Shalendra Raju has also made the same hate comments on his Facebook page. Rajendra Chaudhry also frequently comments against the Fiji government and often attacks the character of many Fijians, including attacks on racial and religious groups. Coming up on FBC News, Nasinu Town Council starts beautification project, a new steel factory to create jobs. Stay with us. It's me, Simsta, here, yeah, right from the Rekidiki town. Our uh, super breakfast show, I'm going to show you breakfast show. I'm going to show you the 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 You know something? Rekidiki Mirchi FM is hot. I'm going to show you the breakfast show. 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 My name is Jabir, I am from Nivya Nasori, I am from Mirji FM, I am Mirji FM is hot. Mirji FM, it's hot. Welcome back, this is FBC News. The construction of a new steel mill in Ba is expected to create up to 100 new jobs. Dial Group of Companies Executive Director Jay Dial says they are investing $22 million into the new venture. The new project will consist of a steel rolling mill, automated wire mesh production and roofing division. Pranita Prakash reports. The Dayal Group says Fiji is experiencing a boom in the construction industry and this has given them the boost to embark on this project to address the demands of our locals and also the growing needs in the Pacific region. Uh, we have decided to embark upon this project. Last year, uh, when uh, the Honorable Minister of Economy um, announced that uh, BA has been included in the tax-free region, so that basically gave us uh, you know, the impetus to decide that uh, we should now embark upon the project. Acting Prime Minister and Attorney General Ayaz Sayed Kayum says the government is very supportive of new business ventures. 
Once the mill is open, obviously it'll be a great opportunity for Bar. Bar people obviously know very well known for the enterprising um, ability, a lot of freehold land in Bar too. And uh, this is why you know the banks were able to venture into Bar and they use the lands for mortgage purposes. But Bar has become a, a hallmark, a destination and indeed a, a impetus for a lot of uh, business ventures that have commenced in Bar and of course spread to other parts of, of Fiji. The acting Prime Minister has also stressed on the need for Fiji to diversify its economic base and to move away from relying only on sugar and tourism sector. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. The Nasinu Town Council has today started a beautification project, including tree and flower planting, in order to beautify the town boundary. The council says the initiative is also a way to raise awareness against climate change. Kelly Vadala reports. The planting of these trees is part of Nasinu Town Council's development plans to have a more greener landscape. The reason why we have involved the students because students are our future. We want the students to know the importance of trees, the importance of flowers, gardens, and the importance of having a landscape within an urban centre. Today, students from schools around the Nasinu area gather together to beautify Nasinu by planting flowers. This is one of the small developments that the younger generation can partake in. Global warming, it's a major issue now, and since we, when we plant more trees, it helps in reducing the effects much more. The earth is warming up. Uh, trees provide oxygen, so that's the main purpose of why we're here. Hope to contribute in a way to help save the environment because everyone knows that climate change is happening and it's very serious. Ali says they also want to involve the younger generation, which can be used as an educational tool on the importance of trees. Kelly Badala, FBC News. A senior immigration officer and a Chinese national appeared in the Super Magistrate's Court this afternoon for allegedly trying to defraud the Department of Immigration. Manager Passport and Citizenship Kalisi Sakyusa and Mali are jointly charged with conspiracy to influence public officials. Sakyusa is also charged with abuse of office, an agent using false document to deceive his principal. It's alleged Sakyusa and Lee conspired to issue two passports to two individuals who were non-Fiji residents. It's also alleged that Sakyusa unlawfully issued the Fijian passports. Sakyusa has been released on bail bond of $2,000, while Lee has been released on cash bail of $2,000. The matter will now be called on the 25th of this month. People are the head of productivity. Labor Minister Chonio Sumate made the comment while opening the BSP Fiji Human Resources Institute National Convention in Singatoka today. Roland Karoy reports. The importance of human capital was the gist of the Labor Minister's message this morning. I think one of the major reasons that we have is our people. And we need to constantly look at how we can get the best out of our people. Employers were told to invest in their workers, to always regard them as assets and never liabilities. This is in line with government strategies in ensuring maximum productivity. A significant portion of government's budget goes to the development of a human being, stretch right from primary education all the way up to tertiary. Participants were eager to learn and find ways to improve productivity in their own organizations. I'm looking forward to achieve more knowledge and more wisdom from this uh, conference. Just looking forward to seeing what sort of um, capital is out there in terms of human resources. Uh, this is focusing on uh, human capital, uh, which is very uh, important for business, you see. It's been wonderful that I have not been a HR person, but still coming and learning about the HR side. For the organizers, the convention is a success in itself. Over the years, uh, you know, we used to have only HR practitioners coming. We have now CEOs who are attending and going back and implementing things in the organization because they've seen the reality. This is the 11th year of the HR convention, and while there hasn't been any mechanism in place to measure its progress and achievements, organizers say that feedback from participants and individual organizations have been very, very positive. Roland Goroy, FBC News. Sports is up next, and here's Jamie with a preview of what's coming up. Nakazaki and good evening. Up ahead in sports, action from day one of the Oceania Sevens. And our games after a flying start at Loanga Park. Stay with us for this and more. This is Valen Rabo from uh, Batang. Uh, I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. I'm Sela Sadakau from uh, Vatukula. 
I only listen to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, I'm Vale, and I'm working at Golden Crown Resort, and I love listening to Gold FM because it plays a really wide range of classic music. I'm Saini Sakio from Kashmir Lotoka. I like Gold FM, but only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. The Vodafone Fiji Seven side remains unbeaten in the Oceania Sevens Championship after playing three matches on day one of the competition at the ANZ Stadium. The Nadani early the one in Buka Code side thumped American Samoa 52-0 and Nauru 73-0 but were given a good run by Papua New Guinea. Fiji had to play catch-up to beat PNG 31-12. The TFL Fijiana also remain unbeaten after three matches. Meanwhile, the Fiji men's team is using the current Oceania Championship as a build-up to the Sevens World Series which kicks off next month. The young players in the new look team were given a chance to impress on the first day of the tournament and they didn't disappoint. Vasnil Prasad reports. This is the team's first game two months after winning the Olympic gold medal in Rio. And what better venue than home turf? The team has a mixture of youth and experience. Nathaniel Lambalamba was on fire, scoring four tries in the first game. There were a bit of butterflies, you know, from Ajay's presentation last night, especially with the new boys, eh? and warm-up this morning went really well. I thought the boys were really focused, and, and also it's good just to get the first game out of the way. For the interim coach, Nathaniel Idawanimbuka, the debutants put up a wonderful performance on the first day of the tournament. There's, there's a high expectations on them coming into this team, you know, and uh, they, I thought that first game it was good for them to have that. And uh, they did quite well, you know, the new boys who came on, and uh, just getting their hands on the ball and making those tackles involved in the breakdowns and contesting those kickoffs. Olympic gold medalist Kichione Talinga and Sami Soni Viriviri also scored a try each in the game. The world champions will take each game at a time after thumping American Samoa by 52 nil. The Oceania 7 here in Suva has laid the platform for coach Nathaniel Edawanimbuka to gauge his players before selecting the squad for the first leg of the 7's World Series. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. Samoa 7's coach Gordon Tijans is in Fiji to follow the performance of his team in the Oceania 7's. Tijans, whose contractual obligations with the New Zealand rugby only allows him to take charge of Samoa next year, has already mapped out plans for his new side. Vasnil Prasad reports. Newly appointed Samoa Sevens coach Gordon Tijans has begun his search for glory, but this time with a new team. I'm here really to observe and, and look at the, the Samoa players. There's a lot of new young players that haven't played at this level before, so it's a great opportunity to, to look at them. The former the New Zealand Sevens coach says there's a lot of work needed to take the Samoans to the top of the world rugby. They're around building a high performance plan, putting a high performance plan together and, and, and looking to identify the talent on the island, also the talent that's in New Zealand, and, and try to put together a, a really strong Samoan team with a lot of depth also coming from, uh, from below. Tijans comes with a rich history, but he knows it will be tough beginning for him, coaching a team which failed to qualify for the Olympics. Tamar, it's also, they had a disappointing year disappointed not to to go to the Olympics and so uh, in finishing ninth in the World Series so we've got a lot of work to do. The 60 year old has worked wonders with the New Zealand Sevens in the past 22 years and once he gets the ball rolling Samoa could be a force to reckon within the Sevens rugby. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. Lack of preparation time will not be an obstacle for the Vodafone Flying Fijians when it takes on the World Barbarians tomorrow morning. Winger Nemani Nandolo says if the team is able to gel well together, they will be hard to stop. Having spent less than two weeks together in camp, this team is ready to go against some of the world's best. The way we play and, and if we can get our set piece and, and structures in line, then um, you know, we'll, be, we'll be good. The Flying Fijians raised eyebrows a year back at last year's World Cup and Nandolo says they have to pick up from where they left in 2015. Boys are... Uh, pump for this weekend. It's 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 actually worked well for us. You know we've got a uh, we usually we start with a, a, a big big game. I mean this is a big game, but you know if, uh, for us as well as it's a big game, it's, it's something we can uh, get a few combinations together as well. Yeah. Meanwhile, coach John McKee, who visited the Belfast Stadium as the Tongan coach some years back, is pleased with the upgrade in facilities. Amazing stadium now. It was looking pretty tired. They had a great tradition, but it was looking quite tired, you know, back in back in the early 2000s. But came here with um, Tonga. We played um, Island Day here in about oh, 2010, I think it was. Yeah, and it was 
really looking really good there with the new stand and, and there's been a lot of work done since then as well. So yeah, it's a top class stadium. The match kicks off at 8.30 a.m. tomorrow. Rohit Deo, FBC Sports. The Vodafone Fiji residents team have been reminded to stick to their game plan when they take on the English Community Lions tomorrow. Veteran Fiji Mbati player Sevanaya Kurui says the boys need to stay focused until the last minute. Meli Tavanga reports. The expectations of the crowd will be high on Saturday and the residents have been told to play their part. I'm telling the boys uh, don't play to the crowd and just stick to the game, uh, our game situation, what the coaches and uh, the trainers have been uh, teaching us. And Because uh, us, us, us local players, they usually play to the crowd. But uh, we tend to get away from the, from the things that we have been teased. Captain Sevanaya Kuroi says this will be a game to remember as they go up against the Lions. Since uh, January, the beginning of this year, but I just joined in uh, two months ago. Uh, I can see in the way the boys uh, maintain it, like the bone is there. And uh, uh, come Saturday, the boys can uh, deliver what is, uh, they've been training for. Coach Joe Rambelli is overwhelmed with the work of Australian-based Fiji Bati player James Torra in developing our local players. The past uh, few days, it's been it's been great to have uh, Jamie to be part of the to be part of this team, especially in helping out in our in our rock place, in, especially our dummy halves. So for him to be part of this preparation, it's, it's, it's really big uh, big boost for the especially for the boys. The Vodafone Fiji residents will play their first match against the English Community Lions at 3.30 p.m. Saturday at Rato Dakombo Park in Nusuri. Meli Tabanga, FBC Sports. Lautoka leads the overall medal tally after day one of the FMF Chow Games, which started today at Singatoka's Lawanga Park. The Sugar City leads the overall table with 10 gold medals, followed by Nandunga with 9 and Ra with 6 gold. Lautoka leads the boys' division with 7 gold, followed by Ra with 4. In the girls' division, Nandunga leads with five gold, followed closely by Navasa with four and Nandi with three gold. Meanwhile, only one record was set on day one by Sarah Dolati of Lautoka in the under-14 girls' 200-meter final. Sarah ran in a record time of 27.56 seconds. And that was your sports for this evening. Business is up next with Jack. <laughs> Major sponsors of the Fiji Human Resources Institute Convention, BSP, has invested $110,000 for the event until 2017. General Manager Human Resources Howard Politini says their decision to come on board was influenced by the fact that the convention focused on increasing productivity. This, he says, would ultimately contribute towards growing Fiji's economy. Technology and so on are great there, but they're only tools. In the end, it's the people who make the decisions, people who press the buttons, people who call the shots, and uh, it's the people who uh, keep the place alive. So, um, you know, BSP have decided that this is where we, uh, we should be focusing in terms of our contribution to the whole economy. A trough of low pressure remains slow moving just north of Fiji. Associated cloud and showers are expected to affect the group till later today. Meanwhile, in east to southeast, wind flow prevails over the group. Looking at the temperatures, Lombasa, Lautoka and Nandi were the warmer centers at 30 degrees, leaving others on 28 to 29 degrees respectively. For tomorrow, occasional showers over most places, isolated thunderstorms and heavy falls are likely. And looking further on to Sunday, cloudy periods with some showers over the interior and eastern parts of the larger islands, elsewhere fine apart from afternoon or evening showers. Recapping the main stories for tonight, judge overturns assessors, finds nine guilty, Fiji celebrates life of fallen heroes, and Fiji stars, starts Oceania 7's outing with wins. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM, to this week's poll question, and we're asking... Are Fijian parents neglecting proper diet for children? To answer, visit our FBC website. Remember to send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. 
Until Monday, I'm Jackie Spade. Have a safe and enjoyable weekend. Ni moda mamba. Bula FM number 2 and Seri.